move on to that's really far and pork. So, um, so this is one of natural farming pork is one of the um, mainstays of natural farming, and this guy here, picture here, is uh, Master Cho, and he's the guy that I went to in Korea to learn these techniques, and he is the most famous for the pigs. I know a lot of people here probably are into growing plants and, and agriculture that way, but natural farming really has its roots in the, these animal systems and this, this pig raising system. Um, Master, this is what made Master Cho famous because he doesn't have a formal education with letters after his name. He was just, you think he just has like basically a high school education. And so it's hard for him to get any credence in terms of uh, saying, you know, I know I know what I'm saying. Um, but this pig pen, when he brought this into the um, 2008 Olympics that they had in China, to the Chinese army moved into Beijing with to, to help with uh, run the Olympics smoothly. And the Chinese army travels with their pigs because they eat what they grow. And they were afraid that by bringing the army into the city with the pigs that it would cause a revolt because the people didn't want the smell of the pig pen and that that would you know would, would upset the people and so they contacted master cho because they heard he had no smell pigs he's been doing it in the philippines um, that's where dr park met him and he got the highest award because they implemented his systems in the city were able to raise their pigs right in the city and no one even knew that there were pigs there um, so this system works. He got Hawaii or China's highest award, um, which you know, like their their medal that they give out for uh, civilians. <coughs> We've been doing this in Hawaii. This is five years running now, I guess. Uh, I, this presentation I actually made a, a year ago, um, and we've been proving it here in Hawaii. So we took this stuff that we learned in Korea that was proven in China. We made. Um, implemented it here in Hawaii with a lot of different successful operations. And now, because we've done it here, a lot of thanks to the work of Mike DuPont, that this is NRCS approved, which is the National Resource and Conservation Service. And they are kind of the, um, they help fund farmers and kind of um, set best practices for us. And so they've actually, approve this waste management system of the deep litter pigs from Master Cho as the best practice. So if you go ask them how to set up a pig farm, this is what they're going to recommend. Is that nationwide now? I believe so. I think it's, it's definitely on the Pacific Northwest and I know um, like Louisiana and Florida and so it's so in, the, in the south as well and I think it's going to converge on the Midwest here pretty soon and, and revolutionize those pig pens. So this, this pig pen is based on natural principles. Um, harmony with the environment, respecting your animals, and their welfare. And so it's, he's spent many years studying the animals in their natural habitat and tries to mimic and create those environments as best as possible based on nature. Um, this is how the system works. Um, you build a barn. The orientation of your barn is important. You want it to uh, face the long ways north-south so that the sun will go over from the east to the west over your barn. When the sun is heating up the roof, it helps airflow to be sucked out the sides as well as the top. So having good airflow and ventilation in here is important. And there should be about six to eight feet of a gap right here. It shouldn't just be right above the pig, but um, here to, to facilitate the airflow. Once you've got your, your barn up, what you do is you can take a plastic liner or a concrete 
thing and you line your bottom with it. And this is just to keep anything from leaking out as part of the waste management plan. On our actual implementation at my house, um, there, I only put a liner in one of them and all four of my pens are doing fine, no smell. Another reason for the liner to go in there is that if it's raining a lot outside, this system may wick up water from the bottom and it may actually pull water into your system and make it wet in here. And it's very critical that this whole system that the pig is standing on stays dry. So the liner may keep stuff from going out and it all may, may also help from stuff coming in, water coming in. But I found in practice here, um, you, don't, you don't necessarily need it. Once we got our liner in, on the very bottom is about six inches depth of charcoal. So that's burnt wood. It's not the um, briquettes that you get from the star. It's just burnt wood as your very bottom. Um, that really helps the microbes and, and manages the moisture in there. Um, then on top of that, you're gonna put logs. And you want your logs to be fairly, fairly big if you can help it, and also fairly long too. Because the longer they are, the less chance your pig is gonna pig them up and bring them to the surface. So when they're really long, it's harder for the pig to pull them up to the top. But it's about two feet depth of logs underneath. This helps get airflow in the bottom and helps facilitate the aerobic oxygen loving microbes that are gonna live and populate this system. Then on top of your logs, you put in green waste. So this could be wood chips, which last a pretty long time. It could be um, banana stalks, which are gonna be gone in about a month or two. It could be your yard clippings, anything that's kind of green waste, even, um, even the dump mulch you could use for, for this green waste area. And you're gonna put about two, two and a half feet of that on the top. And so, and then, then your pig stands directly on top of this system that you've built. And essentially what you've created here is a simulated forest floor. It's just like the forest has forest fires and creates the charcoal, then logs fall, and then there's all these green like leaves falling on the top. So you've created essentially a four to five foot synthetic but natural forest floor. And the forest harbors a ton of beneficial microorganisms. And also, I've never walked in the forest and thought, oh, there's a bunch of manure laying around from animals. It's all decomposed really quickly in this natural system. And so what we do to get that, that natural life that's happening in the forest is then we take this system and inoculate it with about um, two pounds of IMO4 on the top. And that's, like if I had a pig pen the size of this area in here, uh, which is about what, like 15 by 12 or something, yeah. Um, it would be less than a five gallon bucket's worth of IMO, probably um, about half a bucket. And it's just a light sprinkle on the top. And that takes all the beneficial microbes that you've created through the IMO process in a different recipe and inoculates this. So now you've got your simulated forest floor and now you've got your forest microbes working in this system. You can activate the top and really get the microbes to thrive by spraying lactic acid bacteria, which is a very powerful microorganism that um, it's essentially um, concept, like yogurt, the, the microbe that's working in yogurt, sprayed on the top, along with fermented plant juice, which is the extract from, by fermenting plants. And that acts as a food. So you put that really powerful microbe and the food on the top, those activate all your forest microbes into this system. And within two days, 
they populated this entire system all the way down and through. So even though you just put them on the top, they're going to work their way down and find and populate this whole system through. Um, if you're using um, green waste that has been already, like if you're using fresh wood chips, um, it, two days would be good. If you're going to use dump mulch that already has, has been decomposing and has other microbes in there, you might want to wait about a week or so before you introduce your animals because you want your forest microbes to start taking over that area. So essentially this is the floor for the pig pen. And when this is created here, this will last for years and you just have to every periodically add new material to the top once in a while when the pigs do it'll, it'll just kind of decompose and, and break down. Any any questions on the floor here? So why why doesn't it smell? Just going back to the last slide. So that was 17 square feet per per 200 pound pig. That's a minimum. As a minimum that you want to have there. So why no smell in this system? Like what? How do I have no smell, no cleaning, no flies, none of that? And the secret with the smell is that when you smell things and they're gross, it's because it's full of pathogens, which are things that are we commonly associate with disease and things that attack us. So when you're smelling something stinky, it's because you got a bunch of bad guys in your system. And so in our pig pen here, this is, um, can you see behind this pig? This is the pig pen right in here that there are so many good microbes in there because I've created this perfect forest floor environment. I've put the best microbes in there. I've activated them so they're ready to go. And there are so many of them that as soon as the pig makes waste and it hits the floor, the good guys outpopulate the bad guys and they suck all the moisture out. So any moisture that was remaining in that, in that waste is immediately taken out by these good guys and they populate it. And the bad guys don't even have a chance at all to, to start propagating, which is what the smell you would get coming off there. Um, the pig pen is also dry. The litter was dry underneath. And so if, you're, if the pig pen does get wet, it may, like, like really, really soaking wet, it may start to put out some smell because as that moisture gets in there, the oxygen can't move through as well. And so oxygen really helps in your system. Um, but the design of the pig pen as it is facilitates that oxygen flow with the logs underneath and keeps it all going. Um, and I didn't put it up here, but the reason for no flies is flies are primarily interested in eating E. coli, which is a certain type of bacteria that grows. And the flies love it. That's their main food. They're not actually eating like the poop. They're eating the microbes that are growing on the poop. <laughs> on the manure. Um, and so the flies, when when these good microbes outcompete the E. coli and eat up all the moisture and all the food source and overpopulate it before the E. coli has a chance, there's nothing for the flies to eat. So they're not even interested in being there. There's no food for them. So a little bit more on 
the piggery barn and building that if you were to go and do this like chief number one way this is what the building um, in Korea looks like that this actually has like the curve of the bird's wing and the ventilation through the sides along with a roof that you can adjust the um, the sunlight that's going to hit the pen and majority of our buildings that we use to raise pigs have this split roof and the reason for the split roof is that as the sun goes across your building that this sunlight will go through and actually hit the bottom of your pig pen floor and move across as the sun moves across this thing it goes the sunlight goes across your entire floor and that action of the sun hitting the pig like the floor just a little bit like that just for you know a few minutes a day as it moves across is enough to sterilize and um well, I guess sterilize the right sterilize the any microbe or pathogen that would be living on the surface so the sunlight going across your floor is also a, a pretty important factor here i've seen a lot of different pig pen designs this is by far the optimal but um but not every component has to be there for it to work successfully um, also these buildings enable a lot of air to flow through as the sun heats it up it pulls the air through and like i said oxygen is very important to these microbes and functioning so the more air that's naturally cycling through your building um, the better it's, it's going to perform um, the the other thing that's interesting about this is that um, if you were the the floor actually generates some heat and so in areas that are colder you don't have to heat your pig pen because the floor will actually do the heating for you um, whereas that's that's not as important for us here the counter to that here is that in that green waste that you um, in this green waste that if you use material that is too fine if you use sawdust here you may overheat your pigs because it's 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 too fine of a material can you guys cut that off thanks <laughs> um, and like guys, this is just kind of on the orientation of the of the barn. Um, these are the nice reasons for why how you would want to orient your barn based on your conditions. And this presentation will be put online too, so with the slides you can look at them. So what this is showing is that this way is north up, and that if you put your barn at say this orientation, what what benefits are you going to get? Is that shade and sun being depicted in the barn settings there? I believe so. I actually got this slide from the um, Korean presentation. So I, not make this slide here um, so just in a in a commercial operation just a little bit of the Korean graphics to show you what's going on basically the inside of the pig pen is just open it's it's a big open spot where the pigs can go around they have their food on one side they have their water on the other but basically on the inside they're just they're gonna the pigs are gonna go around and they'll actually kind of dig up the and stir the top surface, which again helps to reduce the smell. And this is what it looks like in Korea. I haven't, I haven't seen anyone here in Hawaii get to quite this density of like of pigs, but but this is a totally functioning operational system um, with the pigs in there. And with all those pigs, just the way it is, you get them out. There's no smell? No smell. No smell. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. And I've, like composted, yeah. I've been to a, an operation similar to this in Korea where there was this type of density and um, yeah, no, no smell at all. So the question was, do I have to go back and put more IMOs and more FPJ to inoculate my pen? And the answer is no, it should be there persistently. If however your pen does start to smell for some reason, you can use the LAB combined with the fermented plant juice and that will stimulate the system to get anything out of there. Um, but the IMOs, once you put them in, they're really happy in there. And, and they're, even when I'm adding new material, I don't usually re-inoculate. Re um, so primarily what we use our pig pen for is this, where we're just breeding pigs in in the area. And this same system works, it doesn't matter on the size of the pig, any, any pig's gonna be happy in here. Um, and this is just um, a picture that I lifted from the Korean up, um, thing of, of how this is a farrowing pen that the big pig is out here and then these small bars enable the small pigs to go in here and there's a heat lamp on top of them. So it just helps to keep them happy that way. But in our, in our setup here, we don't have a heat lamp and it's fine. And I just use like a, a hog wire to keep them, the big pens out. Um, again, this is just what some Korean pictures, like I said, I made this presentation a while ago. And um, yeah, like I was saying, no need for heating. There's actually, this here, this heat coming off, is the same as when you turn a compost pile and a compost pile heats up. Essentially, you've created this great um, compost pile and it's just naturally hot. And no need for cleaning. Um, I go into my pig pen all the time and just lay down in it and play with, like, especially it's fun when there's little pigs and you can play with them and you don't have to worry about, like, crap getting on you. It's just like, um, you could roll around in there. Um, I was gonna bring a sample of my pig pen floor for everyone to smell today, but essentially when you go right under and you can pick up the stuff right, cause, cause pigs, pigs make waste on one side of the pen usually, on the opposite side that you feed them. And so they'll, they'll make a fair amount of waste on that side, but, and sometimes there's big chunks on the top but there's no smell coming off of it, and I can reach right into that thing and pull it up and smell it, and it smells just like the forest floor. There's no like manure-ish smell at all in there. And the, the secret to it, like I've, like I've been saying, is, is the IMO. And so all of us, well, most of us here are really familiar with the IMO, but essentially what's, what this is is a box that they cooked a, a starch and collected the forest microbes. And once you've collected those forest microbes and you put them into your, um, into your system, it just works. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with kind of the IMO process, after you've got that box of nice forest microbes, you mix them with sugar, that stabilizes them. Then they're mixed um, with a, a mill run, which creates kind of a bokashi. And that then has concentrated spores of the microorganisms. So when you introduce that to your pig pen, you're introducing trillions of life forms into your pig pen. And there's more detailed recipes on this elsewhere. Um, so this is, this is the construction of our pig pen out at our house. So what we did was we bought a prefab barn from greenhouse specialists. And my dad and I used our tractor to like assemble this thing and it was quite, quite an adventure. Um, but it, again, it has our, our split um, 
roof so that one side can then vent out the top um, here. Then I built just a wooden frame. I just framed this out of two by four all around. And I, so I have one pen here, one in the back, one pen here, and one in the front. And then right through the center here, this is my aisleway, so I can walk through the center. And what we did was we sort of dug into our cliff, or our, our pasture here, so that we're actually down four feet already, so that now when you walk up to the thing, it's flush. So we, we started and we, you know, we dug out this side and filled that side so that now this is down. And I took some old uh, recycled roofing and I screwed that onto the, my frame that I built here. It made a nice little retaining pen there. Um, and then I filled it with my logs and I'm starting to put my wood chips on. And this, and you can see my plastic liner in there too. And this was the first, the first pig pen that I had built. And you can kind of see that my sticks are just any kind in there, like my logs. Like, I was kind of lazy about it, and I just threw them in there. But thinking about it later and my subsequent pig pens, I really put them in there nicely so that they line up. <coughs> you know, it's not going to be, you don't have to make it like perfect, like logs next to each other. But as much as you can get them in there, that, you know, they're all one direction. It's a lot nicer because this one just ate up so much wood chips because they weren't, you know, lined up with each other. So I recommend that instead of just throwing them in any kind, you make them all the same direction. Um, and then this is, you know, just starting to fill the top with um, wood chips. Um, this this operation here is. Kang's farm <coughs> up in Mountain View, and this, um, so they, instead of building their thing out of, me, um, with a metal roof, this is actually made out of some sort of um, plastic tarpish type of material. But again, you can see their roof kind of has that same split, but I don't think that this one enables the light really to come through and, and go across the the ground but still the ventilation helps and that helps the cycle around and when we went to a tour up there um, you can see the pigs here in their pig pen um, kind of with um, metal but if you look at the ground there's a whole bunch of wood shavings on it and I was kind of suspicious when I went up there and I and I looked at their wood shavings there there was no smell but for some reason they had put like two or three inches of wood shavings on the top and so I I knew that wasn't like how it was working, so I dug under that, and sure enough, I found really nice, like it's supposed to be done floor that they had underneath. So I don't know what they were thinking. I think they were nervous that a tour was coming and they wanted to like make it look all fancy and stuff, but but this legitimately works, and, and their floor underneath was really healthy and thriving and working. Um, and another thing, You'll notice is you can see Mike Dupont here, and um, I think her name is Amanda, and they're just chilling in there talking story in a pig pen, <laughs> like in no other system. You know, you go in, you go out, you're you know, you get away from the thing as fast as you can. And this is the only system that I've seen where where people just hang out with the pigs. I mean, look, they're just like hanging out with the pigs. And there's something about this pig pen and this floor that creates a really peaceful, nice, harmonious environment that people are just drawn to. Bring people up to tour and see my pig pen and they just, they just wanna hang out there. They're just drawn in. And so, sort of like the Qigong thing that we're talking about, like the, I believe that the, when you have a working operating system like this, it's just, it's peaceful and you're naturally drawn there. It's just um, good energy. Um, and to show you kind of a, a diverse operation of, you know, you've seen my pig pen, the one Kang's farm. This is um, Kim Chang's pig pen here. And there's her pig there. Um, his name is Gagey, which is a pig in Korean. 
Um, and she has just a single pig pen here built. And hers is, we built ours into the ground. Hers is up. So this is the top four feet. And the pig is actually standing on this top four feet. So to get into it, she built some stairs up to there so she can get in. But this is just a very small version of a pig pen. And you can see the walls are just kind of framed with wood here. Um, just, you know, just to build the, the wood around. Um, and this, this size, that's like maybe a 12 by 12, I don't know, 15 by 15 maybe. And she just has one huge pig in there. And, <laughs> and she's super happy, you know, just, uh, Kim, I was talking to Kim earlier and she was saying about how Gagey is just a mulch machine. Anything she throws in there, the pig just like shreds up and just like turns into amazing, um, you know, good stuff. Um, and the cool thing about this system is that it also works for chickens. And so Kim is also raising some chickens. I think this is a double wide Hubble bubble. <laughs> and, and the difference with chickens is that the, the floor depth is only about six, six inches or so of this same uh, green waste. And you don't need the logs really with the chickens, but, but a deep litter and then the same microbial inoculation. So you're taking those good IMOs and putting it in there. And, it, and it's no smell for chickens. Um, <laughs> and then um, this is a picture of Mike and Liz's operation here um, in Hawaiian beaches. And they also, I got, I got my inspiration um, from them to use the recycled metal roofing for the side. Um, and in this pen here, you can see it's just under construction. It's not completely done yet, whereas this one in the back already has a pig in it. But what Mike did was he used a lot of coconuts for it. So he took the coconut logs and put them in, and then this is coconut shells on the top. And so that's, coconut shell is probably IMO's best friend. You put that in there, it's, it, it loves the microorganisms. It really helps to reduce the smell with coconut waste. Um, and the husk too, not just the shell, but the husk. It takes forever to break down, so it makes a good bedding because it lasts a long time. Yeah, yeah. So, so using the coconut husks yeah. of that. Yeah, uh, the husk and the shell. Yeah, by shell, I, I always think yeah, that thing is a shell. It's just big, but yeah. you're right. Husk is the correct term for that. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and like he's saying, it takes a really long time to break down. Whereas when I filled my pen with bananas, it was gone in about a month. <laughs> and these here with coconuts last four or five years. Now, yeah. Four or five years. So if you want to do it once and do it right, coconuts. Um, and so you can see kind of their watering system here. And they, they experimented with a lot of different watering systems because one of the things that was kind of an issue for them was that the pigs kept laying, laying on the water and flooding the pen. And when they get the floor wet, and it gets really wet because they're running all that water in, it can start to smell. And so I, I think now they have a different watering system, yeah, but... You know, a cup on the side, a bowl on the side now. With a, it's got a um, nipple that they have to push on with their nose, and if they keep their nose there, the water fills over their nose and they can't breathe, so they have to stop doing it. <laughs> and it keeps them from running it over. Yeah, so, so a, a, cup, a cup system, it's like I guess. like a bowl on the side of the, on bowl. the, side of the fence. It's got a nipple pointing down in there, and they got to push their nose down the bottom of this little bowl to get the water to flow. So if they leave their nose down there, the water flows over, stops their breathing over their nose, and then they, they have to back off. So they can drink all they want, but they can't, they can't let it just run and run and run. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I think I think we ended up getting the same system, the cup, and then they can't they can't run the water, which yeah. is the important part. And um, I think you guys have six. We have six pens. Yeah. yeah there's, so this is six pens in here. So there's you know one, two, three on each side of of this building. So there's you know this is one side. That's the other side. And there's six in there. Um, that was built right off of Hoi Hoi, so we went up above ground instead of trying to dig into it. Yeah, 
And, and the, other, the other cool thing that I liked about your system is this is, this is again the aisle way through the center. But one thing that they did in their system is because they built up right in the center, they're able to put a scale underneath. So you can take the pigs out of their pen, bring them into this center area where they're still somewhat contained and able to weigh the pigs. And it's really, um, really um, good that way. Um, and here you can see they're raising huge pigs and also baby pigs all in this same system. And they used um, like chain link fence yeah, for, for their yeah. walls, whereas what I used for my walls was hog paneling. Um, and it's okay, but the, the pigs are stuck, they, the pigs start pulling on the hog paneling, and they're starting to break some of it, so we're gonna have to replace some of it. So, um, so that's a thing to think about. Maybe use the tin roof there so they can't like pull on it or something. I don't no, know. You want the airflow, so you gotta. You're thinking of maybe instead of having this, um, what is this like four foot? This is four but foot. But you run it all the way down. Because they find the bottom and they dig it up and they start playing with the bottom of the fence. So, so yeah, fence yeah, so, all same. The way down to the bottom of the so run run this all the way down yeah. into your your litter system, yeah. right? Yeah, because our our my pigs the same thing. They're at the bottom. They just kind of they they broke it. I mean it's. Yeah, they're breaking this too. But but they're happy and they want to stay in there. I think they're just trying to sharpen their teeth. They're just playing. Yeah. Um. So this is my pig bacon. Um, <laughs> And um, the, the other thing we do in the pig system in Korean natural farming is to ferment our animal foods. Now, not, not every operation does this, um, but it can help the pigs to get more nutrition because the microorganisms have pre-digested their food the, the day before. So that then when they eat it, it's that much more absorbable through their intestines. So we ferment our pig food as well as our chicken food. And again, into the food that we're making, we put the microorganisms. So those same ones, those same microorganisms that are working to keep the floor nice and um, smell free are also put into their food to help them kind of digest and break that down. And I did a, um, there's an animal feed video on naturalfarmingpoi.net that goes over this in more detail of what is actually in their food. Um, but just roughly that, um, feeding the pigs about 30% of uh, greens, 30% of roots or grains, and 30% of fruits. And about 10% of that can be your um, the IMO itself. And I always recommend this book here. Our author is here today. <laughs> um, but this is a great, um, she goes over really in, in, in great detail of, you know, kind of uh, how it's set up, how, it, how they operate, um, things you, sh you should know, get to, you know, get some experience here. So, um, interested in that it's, it's on the internet it's on amazon which would... what's an interesting story i want to tell you really quickly i was looking the other day um to buy a book on breadfruit you know, wanting to know more about it and how to grow it and how to have recipes and what and you know how amazon is they want you to buy more so here i was looking at these things and at the i scrolled down to the bottom it says you may also be interested in and your book popped up <laughs> <laughs> isn't that great wow yeah <laughs> yeah I already have it though, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I just wanted to let you guys to let you know about the pink pen. That there are some rescue remedies 
that if your pig pen begins to smell, uh, for whatever reason, probably it's too wet, um, but could be a, a number of different things. The easiest way to fix this is to create a lactic acid bacteria, or the LAB recipe. And that, there's a CTAR, uh, um, University of Hawaii publication on making lactic acid bacteria available online at that link. And um, so, yeah, like if any if anything arises, you know, LAB first, and if that didn't work, um, try again. <laughs> um, and so one thing, one thing I wanted to talk about is what I believe to be kind of our future here, and that's returning to the Ahupua'a system, which when you think about it, you think, oh, what does Ahupua'a mean? It used to be like a marker stone with a pig head or something. But I truly believe that in Hawaii, there was a deeper reason for that, and that the Hawaiians before were doing this natural farming. And in our present way we live, the pigs are outcasted way away from us, right? You don't want to live anywhere near a pig farm. You want to get them as far away as possible with, with the, the methods we're using. But with this system, you can have a pig pen right next, like right outside your bedroom window, and you don't even know. Like, like your neighbors don't even know you have a pig pen, right? right. Yeah. yeah. Tell them. And then, yeah. Why did you see the piglets and then they're all excited? <laughs> yeah, and, and same thing with Kim Chang, that, that she has this pig pen, you know, this pig living right there. And people come by and they don't even know it's there until, yeah, she points it out. And so what, what pigs are great at is disposing our refuse. I mean, that's forever, they're, you know, their garbage disposals. That's the classic, like, the pig eats whatever you don't. And so with this technology, it enables us to bring our pigs right back into the core of our city. Like, we could have a pig pen right in downtown Hilo, and that brings, it kind of closes this loop that we have right now, where all the food comes from the country into the city and is flushed down the toilet, right? So there's no, there's no nutrient cycling. But if we bring the pigs back into the city, we eat the food, and it goes back to the pigs, we're bringing that, we're closing that loop. We're not losing as many nutrients as we could. We're recycling all these things. And I believe that, you know, if you had a piggery in every township, so like one in Papaiko Town, one in Hilo, one in, um, like a big one in Papua, you know, like smaller ones down in Hawaiian beaches, you know, and, and we all have these pig pens around, that it's really easy for people to get involved in the agriculture by just bringing their food waste and compost to be, you know, to enter this loop of our agriculture. And I think that pigs could actually be our world reserve currency. That we could get off oil by accepting bacon. Because <laughs> everybody knows somebody that wants bacon. And so it's always in demand, right? And pigs are a real representation that when you're, you're doing really good at agriculture, then you have a lot of savings in your pigs because you have excess to feed them. And so it's a real natural representation of your wealth in a given area. And they're also universally acceptable so that if I am in Hilo and I'm earning pork credit, I could go to New York and have that same pork credit be valid. Because everyone wants bacon, right? <laughs> and so I see this as a way, you know, like today our, our currency is based on oil, but that's not very natural. That's a mining thing. You know, we're, we're, we're using it. It's not going to come back. Whereas pigs are always there. And you know the classic thing? Where do you put your coins? <laughs> the piggy bank, right? <laughs> That's where this came from. And the cool thing is they can probably also process human waste too. 
I, I'm not entirely sure on that and whatever, but I know this floor, if I went in here and I, I did my morning thing, it'd be fine. You know, the pigs wouldn't mind. They'd probably have that, So not only does the floor eat that up, but they could, we could also get these loops opened up again and really bring back like Ahupua'a, which is, you know, the marker stone of the pigs. And so you come into the town and it's your local Ahupua'a, which is your, your, you know, your marker stone of the pig, and you're able to get, engage in economy that way. And the cool thing about this is that this same pig technology that I've been talking about also applies to plants. So you can take something that's like this lot here, which was sprayed with Roundup forever, so it only grew moss. It was so toxic, only the moss could live there. You can put a little wood chips down. You can inoculate with the microbes the same way I was talking about the pig pen. And in a few months, you can turn it into a thriving garden. So, it's super universal. So, um, we'll go past that. Okay, yeah. So, um, so any questions? Is there anything that you could do with like um, their compost or something? Like, can you make tea or like put it in your garden beds or something? So the yeah. Um, the, the pig pen floor becomes one of the richest, best microbial things to then make a compost tea with and, and aerate that. The pig pen itself will get better and better the first couple years. By year three, that thing is so matured and the microbes are so happy that they've been living in this system for so long that if you have a pig pen that's three years old using this system, you will have some of the best compost. And so in certain operations, they'll, they'll take up to 20% of their, their floor out and put that out into their fields and then refill that with, with more green waste. And so you're able to actually use this as a compost um, builder that's just great. Um, you don't wanna take it all out at once because then you lose that, your, your maturity. So you know just, just pulling enough out a lot of times what I do is I go up to my pig pen and take, take enough of it and um, make compost tea with it. I also go up and just harvest the big turds that are on the top <laughs> um, and then put those into my garden because they're already inoculated with the microorganisms and the pathogens are gone. And it's, again, that's just a, um, you know, a manure source. It, it, it's really clean and safe to use. Um, when I do that, however, I get a ton of papayas that pop up because my, <laughs> my pigs eat lots of papayas. So. Any other questions? Yes. With that plot that was uh, sprayed with Roundup that you inoculated the iron lungs, uh, do you know if that, like understandably, I think I'd be hesitant to eat any crop that was grown on plot that was just sprayed with Roundup about a few months ago. Do you know if that, if any trace amounts are gone from the, the crop that was grown? So what, what we do if we're going to plant into an area that we know has been um, poorly treated is to put in also some, some char, so some burnt wood, biochar, into that. And what happens with combination of microorganisms plus biochar is that the microbes will take any of that toxin and move it into the char, which is a, like a maximum security prison for toxins. So they'll take the toxin and move it into your char, and then it's it's um, you you could do like the the food here that was grown in downtown Hilo, you can do um, chemical analysis to it, and I guarantee the food that's coming out of this garden is cleaner than almost any other operation happening. Sweet potatoes, um, papaya, taro, banana. Is that light to go there? Charcoal really helps the microbes to regulate moisture. 
So if it's too moist, they're going to pump it down into the charcoal. If it's too dry, they're going to pump the water back up. So in the pig pen, it's functioning mostly as a, as a water buffer for you, moisture holder. Would you use the char or the charcoal in the uh, chicken in a chicken system? Uh, we didn't really, but a little bit will help a lot. Uh, just you know, um, not not nearly as much depth, but but s sprinkling it in there will help. I suppose ash would be too far gone to act as buffer. I suppose ash would be too far gone to act as. Ash is not the same as char. Um, yeah, ash, you, you don't want to use ash. It, what, you're, what you're getting from the char is the structure of it and also the surface area. So ash is actually, you know, it's a whole different thing that um, if your char is ashy, your char won't work as well. Any other questions? So who here has one of these pig pens? And success? Oh, yeah. Except when it gets wet. Yeah. yeah. And you gotta modify it. You gotta do some things. Critical thinking becomes involved. Yeah. You start modifying things. But, but so it works. But it, but in your operation you don't have nearly as fancy of a structure, no, yeah. It's, no. it's more just like it's it's like make do. You know, what's what kind of resources do I have, you know? Uh, what's available? You know, old peoples, iron roof laying around, canopy. Stuff like that, a uh, whole bunch of uh, mulch, you know. I got my tractor that did the hole and everything, and I put everything inside, you know. I bought the I bought the sheet, you know, for the other one that I'm gonna make, but this one doesn't have, so it's more like permaculture than anything, you know. But either way, it works, as long as you keep it dry. But these past days, man, they're raining and coming in and stuff. <laughs> hey, one time, because the, there's, there's no way for the water to get past the roof, and if it's leaking on the side, you know, because I got a 20 by 20, um, and it's divided in four, so it's 10 by 10 for four pigs, and they're big. But I got a 20 by 20 canopy, so what does it tell you? The water dripping inside, so I have to make gutters. But even then, sometimes I gotta, when, it, when the rain is blaring sideways, you know what I mean, it's getting in there, so I have to put shade cloth around. To you know, deflect some of that rain, but for the most part, it's worked. But one time when we had that really big rain for two consecutive days, like I went and go check the pig, and this one was like halfway, like this. <laughs> you know, with with a lot of coconut mulch and stuff like that, it's mud. You know, so I have to go throw in some other type of mulch, you know, wood type to absorb it, and it worked. But what happened now? Because I'm building up, yeah, putting in more mulch. So now they're, they're like looking over the roof. Now, <laughs> can, I you know, can I leave? You know, that kind of stuff. So I had to put two white fours all the way around on the, uh, what do you call them, the peoples that was laid up. That worked. That worked. So I'm just hoping, you know, that, it, uh, that June. June when they're they're turning uh, you know for the livestock for each livestock uh, and then uh, you know go to the auction and stuff that it'll it'll last till then. <laughs> <laughs> but you know there's a lot of critical thinking involved, man. I mean, you start modifying things and then you see which works best in in your environment. You know. Yeah, so the other nice thing about this is it's pretty flexible in its thing and natural farming is pretty forgiving. So if you know you make a mistake like I said just to LAB. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you guys have anything you'd like to add? Well I've seen a picture of the same system in the Philippines. They're using nothing but rice holes as their three feet deep of rice holes inoculated with the eye mold. And they even got their pigs wet. I mean they have a bottom of the side because it's so hot there that they have like a concrete trough so the pigs can get wet and the pigs were getting the IMO wet and I saw a picture you could see the the mycelium growing right in the pig pen and it was so wet and they said there was still no smell I mean you can't tell from the picture but they said it was still working even though it got wet 
with these rice holes in the island. So that's pretty amazing. Yeah. The rice holes, I guess, can provide enough airflow to keep it. Um, yeah, the rice rice holes also um, really like we grow the microorganisms in the rice holes as the mill run, and so it's it's really compatible with the IMO. The system, yeah. So perhaps if you fill with it's different than sawdust, which has more lignin in it and more <coughs> volatiles, whereas the, the rice hole maybe. So it's, it's, you know, there's all different ways of doing it. And, um, we're still learning. And it's fun. But you know what I noticed about that um, is that there were flies on the pig. And the flies that was concentrated on the pig was mostly in that pool that they made because the, the, the pig would do their thing inside the area and they change it every morning. So throughout the day, and steamy as how the Philippines is, you know, um, you're gonna get that smell, but the smell was concentrated in the pool area where the pig was lying down. But the flies, you didn't see flies on the uh, pigs that were in the uh, rice hall area, you know, in their play area, yeah. you see. Mm -hmm. They were mostly just in that pool. So if they yeah. actually cleaned it up, maybe, drain it twice a day or something like that may alleviate some of the fly issue. So if they got, it sounds to me like they got E. coli living in their pond. Yeah. And perhaps something like vinegar or something would help to mitigate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else anyone wants to add to this? Um, well, also on the, when you're talking about the fermenting the feed, I've been, when I ran out of IMO, I just used some of the bedding, right, from the pig pen itself, mix it with the feed, soak it with water overnight, and it's all hot and fermented by the next day because those IMOs are really strong in the bedding. And you can just use a little bit of the bedding in with your feed to fermented. it. Yeah, no, it, thanks for mentioning that too because part of, part of the pig's diet actually in the Korean recommendations is that 10% of the pig's diet is them just eating the floor. So the floor is completely edible. It's not like other systems where you, like, you have to spray it out and keep it all clean. These pigs can actually eat their floor. It's edible for them. Yeah, you never see more than one day old pig manure on the floor. I mean, by day two, it's, it looks just like the rest of the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always thought it was amazing when I was first building that pig pen, uh, up on the roof, uh, putting the roof down in the second and we had pigs in the first two pens. And all of a sudden I could smell pig manure, like I used to smell a pig pen, you know, and I thought that's weird. And I looked over and the pig was in the process of making that manure right then. <laughs> and I could smell it from the pig's tail to the floor. And after it hit the floor, I could not smell it anymore. <laughs> Just that quick. In the air. Yeah. <laughs> cool. yeah, it works that quick. It's amazing. <laughs> Anything else? Um, it's it's really easy to make your own. Um, I, um, yeah, I mean, I I could sell you some, but it's going to cost you like three times as much as if you made your own. <laughs> 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 but, um, do you have any like, instructions for that also? Yeah, the, the instructions for the LAB are listed right here. Oh, right. And they're also at naturalfarminghawaii.net. If you go to learn about natural farming, and one of those links under there, there's a whole, with all these recipes written out on that resource. And it's made with just milk and a little rice. Yeah. That's it. That's all you need. Yeah, milk, rice, sugar, brown sugar. Brown sugar. So you can keep drink of that brown sugar. It's true. Do you usually make it with raw milk, or have you ever made it with raw milk? Yep. Works good. Uh, you can use any type of milk. It's made with powdered milk. You can use powdered milk. Powdered milk, really. Yeah. It's the cheapest if you, yeah, for your economics. Okay, so uh, thank you. And, uh, To raise healthy pigs.
Visit the website in the description box below for more guidelines.